Hello everybody and welcome back. The topic of today's video is how to compare time series that happen in different time intervals as if they occurred around the same time. So think about two products that we're launching, one in January, one let's say in June. And uh, the January one, uh, after a certain period of time, uh, grows up to be a million dollar product. And then a few months later, we launch the second one, product B, and then it takes it some time again to, to grow to million dollars, maybe $5 million. What we want to do is we want to compare product A and product B uh, next to each other and see how long did it take product A to grow? What was the dynamic of its growth versus product B? And if we plot them in their chronological order, it's going to be very difficult to compare. So what we want to do is we want to normalize it that data and um, figure out a way to plot all of those time series, all those growth uh, curves as if they occurred around the same time. So this video will uh, shed some light on how you might do this. So here we have another example of a similar situation. So as you look at this uh, report here, you see that um, our world in data.org has created this really cool chart that plots all of the COVID cases for different countries and it plots it uh, with uh, respect to day starting confirmed cases first reached 30 per day. So basically what they've done is they've taken a look at all of the time series and day zero is the day on which each country has first reached 30 new cases and then they plot them all and now we could see for example that uh, in US cases uh, grew very quickly and then if I go to Brazil cases uh, it took them very, you know, so like in, in, in uh, US by day 40 we had a huge growth but then if you look at Brazil uh, by day 40 there was barely any growth but numbers continue to climb in Brazil where in US we had a slowdown in growth and now cases seem to be going back up. By the way, this is a terrible chart. Uh, and just about every official chart that is presented to us on, on the COVID situation are terrible. If you guys are interested, in my opinion, and review of some of these publicly available public, public policy charts, why they're terrible and why they're really bad in terms of storytelling, I'm not going to criticize the data itself. If you guys are interested, I could criticize and go over the storytelling aspects of these charts and say and explain to you why these charts are doing a really poor job of explaining the situation. So if you guys are interested in this, leave your comment uh, below and I will, um, I will be happy to go back and uh, review some of this for you. So now we're looking at a very similar chart in Power BI. I've changed it a little bit. For the storytelling perspective, looking at new cases is a little bit ridiculous because you have to normalize any type of information by the size of the country, right? So having a thousand cases in China where population is over a billion versus a uh, uh, a thousand cases in a country like Italy um, is a completely two different stories. So we want to normalize all of the statistics when it comes to country to country comparisons. And the other thing that I wanted to do here was to take a look at death curves as opposed to, as opposed to new cases. Again, this video is not about uh, COVID at all, but uh, we're just going to talk about how I was able to create um, this beautiful chart. And let's kind of see how this chart works. So I could uh, compare one country. So I'm going to pick, for example, United Kingdom. So we see that uh, United Kingdom curve has been calculated. We saw a very um, dramatic growth up to day 49. And then things started to level off and things have been slowing down for the last 20 days or so. We can compare that, for example, with US. So now we're going to be looking at US curve. So we could see that number one, the growth of cases in UK vastly outperformed the growth of cases in in United States and we have a far lower mortality in United States compared to US, UK. Uh, as of day 110 we have 379 uh, deaths per million and in UK you have roughly uh, almost double as much 642. And just because we can let's throw a couple more let's throw Sweden, let's throw Italy and let's throw France in there as well, maybe Spain. So these are some of the European countries that we are now looking at and we can see that a lot of them have very similar curves in terms of growth of new cases. Uh, Sweden obviously is an interesting one, uh, got a lot of slack for not implementing the lockdown, but you can see that Sweden is holding its own pretty nicely compared to a lot of European countries. But again, we're not here to criticize or 
advocate any policy decisions. Let's just talk about how these charts are created. I hope I made my point that this chart is uh, very useful to know how to do. So before we take a look at the calculations and the guts of the logic, let's take a look at how the chart is set up. So we can see that in the axis, we put something that's called day. In the legend, we put a country, so that makes sense. We have information by country, so we're not gonna be talking about this. And then the values, the logic, the calculation that I had to create was normalized deaths per 1 million. So um, this whole entire solution requires two things to be implemented. Number one, we gotta have this day um, values, figure out how to do that. And number two is figure out how to create our calculation. Let's take a look at how I did the days. Turns out to create a table with day value is very simple. I'm just using a Power BI function called generate series. So if you've ever created uh, what if scenarios, you, you uh, have seen this function Power BI creates generate series automatically. That's how the what if scenarios are implemented in Power BI. So now all I've done was I created a table, days from 30 cases, and I use a generate series that starts at one goes up to a thousand and increments everything by one. So when I was done, when I executed this line of code, it created a, a table with a thousand lines in them. And uh, I named the, um, the column in that table day. And that's how I now uh, I have my days. This table is not connected to anything and it's not supposed to be connected. All it does is it just serves the purpose of uh, filling up the X uh, axis in this chart. Now let's take a look at the calculation. Okay, this is the calculation that does all the heavy lifting. Let's take a look at how it works. So I named it normalized deaths per 1 million. And I have to calculate three different things before I'm able to uh, return the uh, overall result. So let's take a look at all of the components of this calculation. First one is date reached. So what we want to know is in our case, we're not starting from day zero. Uh, in my product example, you'd probably start from day zero as soon as you start selling the product. All of the data points are interesting. In our case with COVID, data points up until you have reached a certain number of infections is not interesting because in different countries it could take weeks before you hit that 30 cases per day. We're going to compare all countries starting from uh, the day when they have reached day uh, 30 cases in that day. Uh, this is what this calculation does. We're saying Let's take a look at all of our, so cases is the table where all of our information is located. So all of the cases live in this table. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, find all of the records where the daily value is greater, equal or greater than 30. So this is, this line here will filter all of my records to all of the cases that have uh, more than equal or 30. And then I also wanna check this partic the particular metric of confirmed. I have a lot of different metrics in the same table, deaths, cases, recoveries, and so forth. So in this particular case, I'm saying, find the minimal date in this table where cases started to be 30 and more. And the cases we're looking at is confirmed. So by the time I'm done with this command, this variable date reached is gonna have the first day, uh, the first date on which my country has reached 30 cases in a day. The second one calculates the end of the curve. So the reason we need to have this variable is because we created our series of, of days that go to a thousand. So if the disease has not been around for a thousand days, I don't, wanna, I, I don't want it to go all the way to day a thousand. I want it to stop for each country on a day that's the last day for that country. So for example, in US, uh, we started getting, we got to 30 cases um, per day somewhere in March. In Kenya, it took them two months. So as far as we're concerned, our length of the curve will be, let's say, 111 days. But in Kenya, because it took them so much longer to get to 30 cases, their entire curve might be only 60 days, right? So it's important to have this mixed date so we can cut off our curve and not trend it all the way uh, beyond to where our data is no, no longer exists. The next one is we just need to figure out, well, what day are we on right now, right? So as in our chart, we put the days in our axis. So uh, it's an X axis. So we just wanna know what day are we plotting the values for? And now that I have all these three pieces of information, I can go ahead and calculate my normalized metric. So I'm gonna return the metric I'm interested in, in this case, deaths per 1 million. And now through some 
uh, clever filter engineering, we're able to plot our dot where it's supposed to go. So what is the logic? We're going to filter our date for each day that we're plotting. So let's say we're plotting for day 50. We need to figure out, well, what date is it for this particular country? And the way we're going to do it is we know that we started tracking everything on this day. So for example, May, tw you know, uh, April 1st for a particular country, we're plotting something for day 50. So if I add day 50 to April 1st, I will find the date for which we're now plotting our data point. And we just want to make sure that this value is less than our max date. So we don't plot everything beyond the data that we have. Okay, so let's look at this again. So we already know how to calculate our metric. Now what we need to do is we just need to make sure that for whatever day we pick, so if it's day 50, we need to pick, pick the corresponding date in the date table that is connected to our cases. And that's where this, uh, this is happening, right? So by me knowing the start and how far I am from the start, I can add these two together and this returns a date. And then as long as I filter my date table to this date, I'm going to be able to plot that date for each country. So date, day 100 for US would be one date, day 100 for UK would be another date because UK started a little bit earlier than US. You know, day 100 for China will be even another date much uh, earlier because uh, China uh, was, was getting it two, three months before we were getting here in US. Right, so this date will be different from every country, but as long as I know the beginning and the current day I'm plotting for, I can work out what date it corresponds to. And finally, I just wanted to spend a few a minute to talk to you about how you can get to this uh, page yourself so you could play with it and uh, see if uh, this experience is user-friendly and if it makes sense for the scenario you're trying to implement on your end. So I will leave the link to the dashboard, to our COVID-19 dashboard in the description of this video. So when you go to this dashboard, you will be you will see the main page. It will look like this. There is a lot of information here. Uh, we've been maintaining this for several months and every couple of weeks we make more and more enhancements. I'm not gonna be talking about this dashboard much, um, but if you wanna just play with death curves, what you would do is you would click on a navigation, pick the death curves from the drop down, and then just click on go. And this will take you to this page. And then in this page, you could play with uh, different countries, and then you could kind of see what what's happening and what these curves are, and what the experience of playing uh, with this uh, with this chart is like. Hope you found this video to be interesting and informative, and please come back again for some more. Thanks. Bye.